Ladies and gentlemen, this Red Gaming Telecom video. Let us discuss the Xbox One's resolution issues and the ES RAM and the reason why it's causing a lot of issues right now for developers. So regular viewers will know I've been threatening to do this video for a while now, but well, there's been a lot of news regarding it and it's kept on popping up, so I wanted to wait until the period kind of settled down a little bit so that I can actually take some time to read over what's been said and actually formulate some good opinions and give some analysis on it. And there has been an article that I've also done in conjunction with this, so you can check that out. It's got a lot of uh, relevant links, of a lot of how I've actually put together the various calculations in other words it's all explained for you guys it's got links to wikipedia pages and other uh, review websites and goodness knows what else so you can actually backtrack check my findings see what you think and then you can you know ask me further questions now the forums are not quite working yet on the website they shall be soon um, so you can just ask me on facebook that's facebook.com slash red gaming tech anyway let us get on with the show so let's keep everyone up to the same standard and i'll Let's just bring everyone up to speed. The Xbox One um, has had a couple of bombshells recently. We've had Killer Instinct, we've had Call of Duty, we've had Battlefield 4 and Titanfall, and there is talk of Dead Rising 3, but I don't have confirmation on that, so I'm going to leave that out of it. But all of those four titles have been confirmed to be running at 720p. Meanwhile, two other games, that would be Ghosts and Battlefield 4, are running at substantially higher resolutions on the PlayStation 4. Um, Call of Duty Ghosts is running at 1080p. Battlefield 4 is running at 900p. So, not quite full resolution on BF4. The Xbox One utilizes ESRAM 32 megabytes. Now we're going to go into exactly what it is and why there's only 32 megabytes in just a moment. But this operates in conjunction with the DDR3 memory. Now the DDR3 memory of the Xbox One gives a theoretical peak bandwidth of around 68 gigabytes per second. It's worth noting the word peak. Peak basically means that in theoretical best case Disneyland scenario where, you know, Donald, Goofy and everyone else is best friends and buddies and, you know, loves each other. In reality, of course, this isn't quite the case and we don't live in Disney World. In other words, someone's going to message me and say that they do work in Disneyland, aren't they? Anyway, in reality, this isn't quite the case. In reality, the peak the actual effective real memory bandwidth is probably around 58 to 62 gigabytes per second. That will depend extremely um, um, on what you're actually doing. So it's going to really come down to exactly what you're doing with the memory, what game you're developing, and so on, and what else is going on in the system at the time. I'm going to, however, use the peak, in other words, the theoretical max, because otherwise we're dealing with uncertain numbers and they do not make for a good explanation. So I'm just going to say 68, even though that reality is probably not quite that much. Now, this is tied up with the Xbox One's ESRAM. Now, the ESRAM runs at 204 gigabytes per second which sounds pretty damn fast. In, in actuality, it's actually considerably faster even than the PlayStation 4's memory. Um, PlayStation 4 gives 176 gigabytes per second. Um, that's, once again, peak reality. You're probably looking at about 172 to slash 170. According to developers, one developer said 172 was what he was personally guessing when he was developing his game. I honestly don't remember the developer's name, but I do remember the quote. Anyway, um, that figure, oh, 204, is by the way based on Microsoft's actual internal numbers. They have said that this accounts for the black hole in the ESRAM. It takes into account the inefficiency of the memory. And so, uh, basically speaking, you... Um, Xbox One utilizes the ESRAM to make up for the lackluster uh, DDR3 memory bandwidth. And I, you know, I'm just being honest in the word lackluster. So let's first of all tackle why ESRAM. Okay? Because develop I've had people message me this several times now and they've asked, well, why did they use it? It's actually pretty simple. I've I have covered it back in the day, but I think it's good just to go over it again. Um, there's actually a plethora of different reasons why they've decided to go with ESRAM. 
The first reason is that the specifications of machines are not selected, you know, uh, for example, in 2012, right? Uh, there is a slight um, example where this is not the case, and we'll talk about that in just a moment. But the actual primary architecture for the machines is decided, in this case, in 2010. When they were designing the machine, they knew categorically their design goals. When, In other words, when you're designing something, you have to have a goal in mind. You can't just say, well, let's just see what happens, as it's just going to not work at all. Um, so, in other words, you have to basically have a set design goal. You have to have what you want, the rough pr uh, price that you have to work with, the budget, how much you want to sell it for. Do you want to make a profit? Do you not want to make a profit? What's your end goal? And so on. In Microsoft's case, they wanted to make a small profit. They wanted to continue to push the Connect technology. They wanted, as well, to push applications. They really were set on this. They they wanted to do much more than just game. Now the problem is, as anyone who is a regular viewer or a PC gamer or whatever knows, memory has been a big problem in the last generation. Uh, particularly on consoles, 512 megabytes of memory. Um, even, for example, the developers behind Dishonored have completely forgotten their name, which is pretty damn weak, but regardless, they said one of the big issues for them, and they actually had to cut parts out of the game, was memory. Simple as that, black and white, and John Carmack has said it with various of his games. Uh, it's it, it's just it's prevalent, it's consistent, it just wasn't enough memory, because it's not like it's just 512 megabytes, there, you know, there you go, Sonny. It's not, because it's actually 512 megabytes minus system reserves, which have fluctuated. For example, the PlayStation 4, uh, PlayStation 3 managed to claw back some memory for developers. I believe they got about 40-ish or 50-ish megabytes back, which is pretty good. I mean, it's like, you know, 10% of the total memory. But even so, it's pretty piddly. From when you're dealing with consoles that are basically targeting, you know, 720p. And even titles like Bastion, the developers have said categorically that one of the big problems is they, they struggled to fit the game. And this is a third-party indie game. Sorry, this is like an indie game. It's not using Call of Duty graphics. It does look very nice for what it is. Um, and it's also one of those games that kind of expands as you're playing it. So it's got very little loading. But they did say they really struggled to get it working at a decent frame rate at uh, 720p. All because of memory. Right, so now we're on the same page. So effectively speaking, Microsoft knew that if they wanted to counter the, the battle of ESRAM, they sorry, if they wanted to counter the fact that games required a lot of memory for the next generation, they needed at least eight gigabytes. And so they pretty much did the following um, equation in their head. We need eight gigs. We are not sure on the choice of GDDR5 memory. Why? Because they're not sure that the actual modules, that modules would be large enough to provide enough memory for what they wanted. Secondly, the cost of uh, GDDR5 memory is actually higher. In other words, it costs them more cash. Now, there is no such thing as GDDR5 with higher latency. That's that's hokum, that's rubbish, that's trash, right? It has, I believe, one nanosecond higher latency, and this really depends on the layout of the memory, but generally speaking, it's pretty much no different. I've actually got articles and videos on that, and you can reverse engineer exactly what I've done. I've basically just broken down manufacturers' own spec sheets, and you can see exactly how that works. So we also know that GDDR5 memory takes pretty much, you know, the same amount of voltage. If anything, it takes slightly less voltage than DDR3. So that's not the cause, right? So when they're saying about an uncomfortable place, what they actually mean is price. That's just, you know, not beat around the bush. So in reality, they were left with a decision. Um, you know, how do we basically make up this huge deficit of uh, memory and the only option of course was ESRAM so Sony at the basically the last minute yeah, at the midnight midnight hour um, the story goes that they decided to just say you know what 
we don't think 4 gigs because back into, up until this point, we thought that the PlayStation 4 was going to have a large memory deficit, but we thought it was going to have a, a large memory, a uh, large bandwidth uh, improvement. So basically, we thought that pretty much all the specs were going to be as they were, but the Xbox One would have a huge memory advantage, but the PlayStation 4 would have a better memory advantage in terms of bandwidth. It turned out that that wasn't the case. Basically, Sony decided to, you know what, let's not bundle the PlayStation Eye, the camera, in with the system. They forgo They just was like, no, let's not make that standard. Instead, we put that extra cash towards a GDDR5 memory. And so, rather than having 4 gigs of GDDR5, we instead double that to 8. So anyway... Uh, Microsoft at this point could not make that same gamble. They were already locked in with ESRAM. They'd already pretty much designed the system around it. There's no way at this point that they could uh, pretty much make a U-turn. It was impossible. So the question becomes, why only 32 megabytes? You know, why didn't they go with like 64, 128 or, you know, pull an arbitrary number out of your butt here? Well, <laughs> it's kind of funny. Because it's, you could say balance, and I don't like using that word since it's Microsoft's favorite buzz, uh, buzzword, but still. The problem is that you have a certain die size, right? Uh, the SOC slash APU slash whatever you want to call it is a finite amount of space. There's multiple reasons for this. One, the bigger it is, the more it costs to produce. Two, the more power it requires. And three, the more heat it produces, all of which are bad. Okay, they are your mortal enemies and they must die. You cannot have something that is infinitely power hungry and produces lots and lots and lots of heat. It is bad. So basically they knew that they had a set of die area to work with and the SRAM is pretty damn huge. So what happens is that you've got a finite space to work with. So they put 32 megabytes and then sure, you know, they could have put 64 in. They could have put, you know, 128 in. The problem is doing so, you're going to start squeezing out the um, GCN cores. You're going to start actually squeezing out compute units or the, the CPU. Something is going to have to suffer to put those in. So, sure, for example, let's just make up a completely arbitrary uh, system. This would not probably work. I don't exactly know the die size off the top of my head, but let's just make it up. Let's assume that, sure, they could have put in 64 megabytes of ES RAM, but in its place, they probably would have had something like eight compute units, and they would have maybe uh, had to have only one Jaguar module or something like that. Obviously, that is not going to work. They're either going to be in a worse position. So what they had to do is pretty much just say, okay, this is how much memory we can manage to squeeze in and the space we've got available with the power budget we have, with the price budget we've got to work with and so on. Now let's talk just for a moment, let's go back into time and let's jump into the DeLorean and talk about the Xbox 360. The Xbox 360, you may remember, had what is known as EDRAM. Now this was 10 megabytes of memory on basically a small daughter board uh, conjoined with the GPU and its purpose was to act as a small buffer and it, it did a pretty damn good job. It actually provided uh, free anti-aliasing as well as other effects and was actually pretty instrumental on the Xbox 360's performance. Now as I said this was 10 megabytes um, so not exactly that much and not enough to do say full uh, 1080p or anything like that but it was pretty damn handy and actually pretty much handled everything that you could want. Now, the problem is that if we start to um, delve into the the options of, say, a daughter board, right, for the Xbox One, um, you know, and go the EDRAM route, which they didn't, there were, you know, discussions as to why they didn't and effectively speaking you know it, it could have been multiple reasons they could have found it too difficult to mass produce again in large quantities but most likely one of the real costs uh, one of the reasons was actually cost again um, obviously they have a finite budget so one of the problems about this is that when you're actually creating an image um it has to be basically rendered onto a frame buffer for it to be displayed on screen. 
Now, this is kind of a complicated uh, subject, so I'm not going to go super into it in this video. Um, but there's a couple of ways you can do it. One of them, uh, one of the more prolific ways now for games is what is known as deferred rendering. All of this, by the way, is in the article, complete with links, so you can check those out. Um, but as it turns out, it's actually pretty easy to calculate how much memory um, an image takes if it's in frame buffer using deferred uh, deferred rendering god i'm losing the ability to speak this is because i've been typing this up all day but um i forgot how to english don't you know but anyway as it turns out it's pretty easy to calculate this stuff you can simply times the width by the height so for example 1920 by 1080 and then you will times that by the depth of the color so for example uh, 8 BPP bits per pi bytes per pixel or 16 or 24 or you know 32 or whatever it ends up being for you so um, for example an 8 BPP at 1920 by 1080 will be like 15.8 you'll have like 16 megabyte um, sorry 32 megabytes would end up to be like 16 and so on and so forth so yeah not too particularly difficult once again all the maths on how I've you know got all that stuff is right there for you to follow along in the article um, rather than just spend five minutes telling you guys how I did it but um Microsoft have pointed out time and time again that you can actually texture, you can, you know, write to the frame buffer to DDR3, and that's great, and you can do this. But the problem is, and those who have been checking out, like, the lower-end GPUs of the PC, or are familiar with the more recent Intel processors, there would be the Haswell with its IGP, Integrated Graphics Processor, They'll be kind of familiar of the problem here. Now, the IGP of Haswell actually features 128 megabytes of EDRAM, and yet it's still extremely sensitive. Actually, when you're playing games such as you can on, you know, such a well, it's kind of like a low-end GPU, but still, such as you can on the system. If you're playing that with slow DDR3 memory, um, you're actually going to notice. The, the performance pretty much bombs uh, compared to, say, um, higher-end DDR3, which, to be fair, the Xbox One does utilize. And so you could just see the huge difference, and this has got quite a huge frame buffer. Now, there is a little point to make here, um, and that is, of course, that the GPU for PC is typically, if it's designed for a game, expected to have a much higher performance than this. Um, in other words, much higher memory amounts, much much faster memory. So obviously it's not exactly like for like comparison, I just pointed out. Another point is, say, and this is a really good one, is the Radeon 7770. That's three sevens and a zero uh, GDDR5 versus uh, the exact same card but DDR3. The DDR3 version basically gets smacked constantly. Um, figures for, are like 30% to 40%, uh, sometimes even 90% of a difference depending on the game, the resolution and so on that you're actually uh, playing. Uh, so, in other words, it's at a massive disadvantage, not just a small disadvantage, but a pretty damn huge disadvantage. Now, you can texture from ESRAM. You can do pretty much anything you want um, from DDR3 to ESRAM and so on. And you do, of course, have the hardware mover engines to help out. Uh, Microsoft, because as we discussed just a moment ago, um, with render targets and so on, they've actually created their own compressed render targets. Now, these are much more memory efficient, and that's great. They're actually much more similar to that of the Xbox 360 than, say, the traditional ones, but there's a problem. Um, they'll argue that if you're utilizing these in conjunction with DDR3 and, of course, ESRAM, you could basically work around the ESRAM's limitations. In other words, you can kind of get around it somewhat, but you've got to also bear in mind that this requires a plethora of experience from the developers. You can't just magically know this stuff, and 
Also, from what we understand right now from the development side of things, obviously it's still fairly early, but effectively speaking, you have to do a lot of manual work with the SRAM, and this includes flushing it and so on, and what's clearing the cache. Because of this, developers are basically pointing out that right now, launch games are just struggling compared to what they should be. Honestly speaking, it's very, very difficult right now to get a handle on just how big the problem is going to be. Developers and leaks and everyone else in between have said, well, it basically can go one of two ways, and this is pretty obvious, but still. One, it's going to get better over time. In other words, as developers get used to it, as the toolkits become better, as the tool chains improve, as their experience uh, obviously increases, the levels of suck for them are going to become slightly marginalized. In other words, they're just simply going to have gotten used to working around it. Very similar to the PlayStation Freeze memory system, which was pretty damn far from ideal. Not quite as bad as this, but still. The other concern, and this is completely opposite, is that when you actually start introducing compute into the mix, it's actually going to make things worse. So, the basic theory is that this is what's going to happen. The Xbox One and the PlayStation 4 will grow to a greater level of parity. In other words, the PS4 and the Xbox One, the, the difference will start to become slightly less and less and less because of the SRAM. But, then the developers will start to focus more on compute, which is an entire subject on it by itself. But suffice to say, this will actually increase the demands of the memory system. And so, <laughs> it will actually go the reverse. In other words, rather than the gap starting to continue to diminish, it will start to increase again. So in other words, it's kind of like, imagine you're in a race with someone, and you know, you're both in a car, you know, your own car, and, you know, they're driving along at, say, 60 miles an hour, you're driving along at 40, they, you know, then you start to push the gas pedal a little bit, and, you know, you catch up to them, you're going 50, you're, you're thinking, okay, I've got more left in the tank, I can go a bit faster, I can get to 55, maybe 60, you start creeping up to 55, you're pretty happy. But then, in this case, they also start to, the games developers start to use compute. So, in actuality, you know, you just can't keep up. Um, and that's one of the concerns because they're worried that there's going to be so much data already being flooded into the ESRAM because of frame buffers and texturing or God knows whatever else. Um, they just simply won't be able to flood it with anything else and you'll have the Captain Scott problem where you just can't push it anymore, Captain. The other concern is that developers are already murmuring. Um, there's whispers that they're murmuring that they're actually not that worried about the ESRAM's bandwidth. Why? Because it's just not that big of a deal, because it's already so bloody, you know, it's so small that at that point it doesn't really matter how fast it is, in other words, they don't really think they're going to 100% utilize it anyway to the point where that's the concern. You know, in, in a magical land where the only thing they ever had to worry about was the, 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 you know, the bandwidth, of course they'll fill it up, but reality of the matter is they're probably much more likely to run into issues with either the size of the damn thing or um, other issues such as the, you know, the DDR3. In other words, the DDR3's performance and actually getting the most out of the DDR3 and making sure that you're utilizing it in the best possible manner and you have to be neat and tidy when you're damned while doing so, that's going to be the big concern for developers. Um, obviously, things are going to change significantly. The development tools are definitely going to improve, but you've also got to remember the same thing for the PlayStation 4. It's also worth noting that the deficit of the Xbox One is not merely just the ES RAM. There are a plethora of other different issues. Now, obviously, to the Xbox One's credit, um, it, did ha it does have things such as the hardware move engines, which, and of course, very good audio processor, and these do help to alleviate audio. And you may also remember that uh, developer, the, the hardware developers at Xbox have said that the actual increase in clock speed of the CPU actually gave them a much better performance increase than the GPU. 
But my gut feeling onto this is that we're going to start seeing a shift onto compute anyway, because let's face it, it's just got to happen. The CPUs inside the systems are just not that fast um, compared to, say, in the next generation anyway. Um, compared to, like, you know, Xbox 360 and PS3, you know, the, 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 the Jaguar is just not that fast, really. It's, you know, it's fast, it's much more efficient, but it's not a huge runaway success faster. Um, it's not really what you call the next generation. It's actually the memory and the GPU power that's actually the thing that's really pushing these systems. And so, of course, you've got the 1.840 flops of QB computing power, I'm sorry, versus the 1.32 of the Xbox One. Uh, that's obviously not including system reserve for the Xbox One. You know, you're looking at half the amount of ROPs, 48 shade units compared... To, I'm sorry, 48 text units compared to um, 72 of the PS4. And that's not including, of course, things such as the compute queues. I don't really think it's a stretch, very difficult, or um, particularly an astute observation for me to say that if you just were to look at it as a pretty much the cold hard facts, the PS4 was designed for games. Now, obviously, Sony have implemented other things. Obviously, you've got the streaming in there and other bits and bobs. And I don't necessarily agree with all the decisions made with the PlayStation 4. But you've got to remember that both consoles are operating on a budget. It is not this limitless pit. Um, and so I'm relatively happy with what they had. Yes, I'd have liked more performance power at the PS4, but there you have it. The, the ES RAM on the Xbox One is definitely going to be a cause of contention. They could have gone other routes, like for example, they might have been better to add in a separate memory pool, maybe to use like GDDR5 just for some graphics memory, but then you've got issues like it's not a fully unified memory architecture anyway, and they could have also had other problems like space, like um, power constraints and so on, uh, price as well was going to obviously be a factor. Um, I think that Microsoft probably did the best they could, judging by, you know, the, the issues they had. I just think that, uh, in some ways, their priorities were pretty much just not right. Now, does that mean that you won't be able to enjoy the games on it? Of course not, right? It's like... It's not really a big deal. I mean, this is just how it is. Um... I think that if you're looking forward to the games, you're going to enjoy them regardless. It just means that from the developer's point of view, and from your point of view, you're probably going to be dealing with lower resolution titles for the most part. Um, obviously things are still really early yet, there's still a lot of information that's unknown about the ESRAM and how important it's going to be. But for right now, I think from my own personal opinions, I just, and from the the reading I've done, I just don't see a way to make this a painless process for the game's development. Um, sure, Microsoft have said, well, you know what, it was used on the previous generation. Yeah, but, you know, things are acceptable at one point in time, right? It's like, that's because at that point in the generation, it was the done thing because there was nothing better. Um... That's kind of like, and this is kind of a crappy analogy, but it's kind of like me uh, going out and building a steam train with, like, you know, fully laid down tracks, you know, steam engine and everything else, and saying, well, it's the fastest steam engine available. And then you come up to me and say, but, but Paul, that doesn't make sense. You know, dude, there's like, you know, these super fast trains and stuff that, you know, go hundreds of miles an hour. I'm like, no, 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 you know, this is a tried and trusted method, I'm surprised you don't understand, this is a steam engine, this is a steam engine, bro, it's, you know, it's, it's very robust, and you're like, okay, if you insist, in other words, things are great at the time, but things move on, and I'm not saying that the, place, the Xbox One is an apt, I'm not saying it's a terrible console, I'm not saying that we're going to have crap games on it, I'm not saying that you won't enjoy the games on it, I'm not saying developers won't get around to 
programming for it, but what it does indicate, um, the ESRAM is the cause, or at least one of the primary causes, it may not be the sole cause, but one of the primary causes for the worst frame resolution, so the worst resolution, um, and the struggles that developers are having because you could even see this when they ported uh, that there was a story going around at the previous E3 and it pretty much went, uh, this is not verbatim but pretty much, you know, you can google it anyway but it was pretty much like this that um, the developers ported Call of Duty Ghosts to the Xbox One when they did so it only came to 15 frames-ish a second they did so for the PlayStation 4 and it was like 90 or something. And that was out without... Blah, 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 let me start again. Without optimization. In other words, this is a raw code. And if I had to surmise the reason as to why this was, it's merely because at this point, it was all being textured, created, and ran from DDR3. And in other words, the ESRAM was not being utilized correctly. Therefore, um, the game obviously suffered as a result, right? Anyway... Um, I think that's just about it for this particular video. There's a lot more to speak about, but this is getting like ridiculously lengthy already. Maybe I'll do a second part to this if I've got the um, enough to make another part. Otherwise, I'll just be small amendments and stuff. So anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.